Hi, my name's Rachel and I'm one of the cancer support workers based in Bristol. Myself and my colleague Leslie are going to do a short presentation today on fatigue and getting active. So what is fatigue? Fatigue can be described as an excessive tiredness or lack of energy. It can be felt both physically and mentally and may be a side effect of your treatment or it may be caused by the cancer itself. Fatigue can affect everyone very differently from being very mild to being very disruptive of your day-to-day -day life. It can be really difficult for people to empathise with fatigue as it cannot be seen. So as the quote at the bottom says, it can be like putting a harness on every morning and you feel that weight but nobody else can see it. So it can be really hard for others to understand. So energy conservation. So managing energy can be quite difficult. So we want to give you some ideas of ways that you can manage it effectively. So one of them is visualizing your energy as a battery tank and the aim is to not let it go into the red. You can do this by thinking about your daily activities and maybe categorizing them into low, medium and high energy tasks and spreading them out evenly throughout the day or the week. Another way is maybe using the three P's. So the first P is plan your day. So what do you need to do and when do you have the most energy? Prioritizing. We all know there are activities that we need to do and must do, but sometimes are they important and must they be done? So for example, do you need to do that pile of ironing or can you just go and have a coffee with friends and is that more important? The final P is pace. This can be the most difficult one because we're all used to rushing about and doing things as at our own time and pace, but it is really important to listen to your body and rest before you feel tired. It can help to keep a fatigue diary. So if you're on treatment, you may notice your good and bad days. So actually keeping a diary can be really helpful. So you can use the three P's to plan, prioritize and pace your energy throughout each week. So the Macmillan therapy team, within our Bristol hospital, we have a team that are there to specialize and support you with fatigue, musculoskeletal problems, breathlessness, and also getting active. So if you've got any questions or any previous conditions that you feel maybe are stopping you from getting active when you would like to, or your fatigue is actually becoming very disruptive, then we would suggest a referral through to this team to just help you manage that more effectively. You can speak with your clinical nurse specialists or the cancer support workers and we can make a referral through to this team for you. However, so we've talked about resting before you get tired. However, it is really important to listen to your body and if you are feeling very tired and fatigued then please do rest when you need to. However there's more and more evidence suggesting that the more active we can stay during treatment it can really help with the challenges that the cancer and its treatments bring which includes fatigue. If you would like any more information on fatigue support then please do not hesitate to contact us. Our contact details are in the introduction slides um, but I will now hand over to my colleague Leslie who will talk to you about getting active. Thank you, Rachel. Hi, I'm Leslie. I'm one of the support workers from Western Hospital. Very welcome. Um, so Rachel talked a lot about um, resting, but also how important being active is. And there are many, many um, useful things about uh, endurance and it reducing fatigue. And it improves the heart and lungs and the mood and can help sleep. And it promotes a feeling of well-being. Endurance reduces muscle deterioration, as it states on the slide, and keeps our muscles active. Back in my mother's day, you were told to rest. She did her training in the 50s. Lie down, don't get out of bed. But muscle deterioration can happen very quickly, so it is important to keep that up. Heart and lungs. Heart's needed to pump oxygen from the lungs and nutrients to the blood around the body. Better pumping, better repair. Therefore, that's really helpful throughout treatment because that will help get the medicine around the body better. So all very positive things. And the mood, it increases endorphins in the body, the feel-good hormones. Now, we know that these can be released when we eat chocolate. It's a whole other story. But it is those very same feelings that you get from eating something that you enjoy. And well-being, it helps us to feel accomplished. And also that ticking off something that you've actually achieved throughout the day. And that, again, can have a really positive impact on our well-being. So it's about where to start. And government guidelines reckon, recommend two and a half hours of moder moderate, intense physical activity per week. 
And the good thing about this is don't think about it as exercise because sometimes for some of us that can scare us off. And it's about doing it in small bursts if necessary. Some of us might like to go out and go for a long run. Some people might to go on a bike ride because all sorts of people have a cancer diagnosis and they do many things in their lives. Some people are never active. I recently picked up a running book and um, was really intrigued about it. And it was walking and really intrigued. And I was reading the preface of it and it was written by a patient who'd had a breast cancer diagnosis and she found that walking helped her well-being. So it, that was a really interesting thing. So it hit all walks of life. Small amounts of activity are fine too. So if you're watching the television and you're in the middle of treatment and you're thinking, gosh, they've told me I've got to do some exercise. I really don't feel I can do this. I don't think I can even step my foot outside the front door. Go to your cupboard. You've all got tins in there, or most of us do. A couple of tins, get them out, some arm exercises, sitting watching the television, or even some sits to stand. All these little things will contribute to activity. It isn't necessarily about exercise. If we see things in a big way, I think it was mentioned earlier about the stairs, climbing the stairs. If you think, gosh, I've got to go out for a half hour, walk well, I'm staying in here and keeping wrapped up warm. Don't want to do that. Whereas if I think, well, they said I could do it in five minutes or 10 minutes. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. One lady, she irons every item she irons. She then walks it up the stairs. That's activity. So please don't see this as huge. Playing with your grandchildren or if it's not raining like it has been lately, out in the garden, picking up some leaves. All these things contribute to activity, even hoovering. Some people do hoovering to certain music to see if they can achieve it in a certain time. My little dog, I made him walk up a hill. It was great for me because my legs are long, but he did struggle because his legs were little. But it got that increased breath, which is what we're looking at now. Lifting the remote control, sorry, we've jumped a slide, do apologise. So this is not right, hand to the remote control, hand to the, nah, that, that, that's not quite enough exercise, although it's activity, it's not quite enough exercise. But we certainly don't want to be like this here either, because if we're like this, we're not going to do it again. And also it's about increasing the breath, feeling the breath change. You know, we know that when we get anxious, our breath changes. So if we're doing a little bit more, that's when you can notice that you are doing a little bit more because your breath, your breathing does change. So we need to be able to talk comfortably that when we're doing it. But again, you know, if you're in the middle of treatment, don't beat yourself up. Just do something, at least do something. And even if it's not, you know, quite where you'd like it to be that day, today is today and tomorrow is another day. There's a lot of resources out there in community available to help you with this. Those of you that have never done any at all, those of you that want to do it at home, uh, the Macmillan produce and move more uh, DVD. So those of you that still have a DVD player, because apparently they're extinct, but I still have one. Um, you can, um, you know, have one of those. We can source those for you. Just ask one of the support workers. We also have lots of uh, uh, groups, classes, walks available in the community. Penny Bronze being talked about a lot today. They have a lot of resources. And for those of you that are working and, and think, well, I can't get to these. There's a lot of online. There's a lot of virtual um, real time and watching it in your own time. Uh, Pilates, yoga, all sorts of things. One gentleman took up Tai Chi, meant to be very good, moving more, a bit of relaxation. So as we've said, we have two Macmillan centres at Western and at, at Bristol and Information Centre. Please, lots of resources in there of what's available in the community, what's available online, what's available to do at home. Please do come and ask. That's what we're here for. Thank you for taking the time. <laughs>